Otherwise, we could go forever. We could. We could. Okay, but we're, uh, here we go. Welcome to the Insights Podcast, presented by Vantage Pro. I am Duke. That all the way, oh, no, I always do that. It's that way. All the way to the other side is Van. Oh. I'm here. <laughs> I know it's mirrored. I always, I always forget about that part. Um, <laughs> so all the way on the other side, and that, uh, that uh, beautiful looking man in the middle, our guest, oh. Tim Foot from Slingshot Group. You just, like, you just like the hairstyle, don't you, Duke? <laughs> I do. I do enjoy it. I mean, the hair it's plus the It's the best haircut in the world. I uh, I loved you in the Newsboys, by the way. Uh, oh. You were great. <laughs> that is uh, not the first time. It's not the I, first I, time. I know. You uh, <laughs> I, We had you on our last podcast, and uh, uh, you were talking about your music, and I, I, man, I had that joke ready to go, but, you know, we moved on. <laughs> you got it. What a shame. And, no, I didn't forget it. I just, I... Uh, <laughs> I, I chose to keep us on uh, on path, so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh, if you didn't see our first uh, our first episode with Tim, uh, we were talking about uh, just kind of the state of production staffing and uh, where where kind of the the industry is. What are the challenges that are happening right now in the church world with production and um, uh, some things to think about as far as. Um, whether you're a church looking for somebody or you're a somebody looking for a church, um, just just kind of the, the landscape has changed so much. So we talked a lot about that. So we won't do that. But we you kind of you kind of started talking a little bit about this idea of leadership. And um, I think there's a bigger topic here because um, I think one of the things that when I first started out as a tech director, I struggled with, especially as a young guy, and I'm seeing this with a lot of the young guys who are hired now. So uh, it turns out this must just be a thing because it, it seems to happen a lot. Um, we have we, we, churches, we, we're constantly hiring, as Van always likes to say, the leper with the most fingers um, and not necessarily somebody who's a leader. And then we go, okay, well, you know how to mix the best out of everybody. You're over the tech team now, whether it's volunteer or, um, or, or staff. And then you even go up the food chain and, you know, we've got a pastor who's got maybe six pastors on staff, a whole facilities crew, production staff, whatever. And it, it like with some of them, it feels like, like their goal is the least amount of meetings with the staff possible every week. Right. Uh, as opposed to, you know, being the leader of the leaders of the people. Right. So I think that's a that's a really interesting topic. I know you guys are doing a lot of coaching and a lot of um, uh, kind of teaching with with churches you're working with. So I'd love your take on a am I crazy? Am I is what I'm seeing uh, not really true? And it's just me. Um, and then what in the world do we do about it? Hey, it's Van. I'm just going to jump in here for a quick second and ask you that if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up, please subscribe, click that notification bell and share this out on the socials if you can. And one more thing, leave a comment. We absolutely read them and we will respond to them. All right, back to the podcast. Yeah, it, uh, it doesn't just happen in production world either, but you would know that you get a lead pastor who loves the work a production director does on a weekend in minimizing distraction, what amazing mixes that they don't want that person to go anywhere. So it's the Peter principle. They continue to promote them out of their, uh, out of their gift mix. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it sometimes happen with worship leaders. Uh, a, a lead pastor's got an amazing connection with a worship leader on stage. And so they promote that worship leader into being over a whole department and they've been totally promoted out of their gift mix. And so it's really working out a person's uh, skills. And, you know, one of my great mentors, man, talked about him on the last podcast, Stan Indicott would say, I wish you could just hire the right people and then write their job description six months into the role. Hmm. Uh, because then you know uh, you you know what they're bringing to the table, but I think we do leaders a disservice when we when we promote them out of their sweet spot without giving them the development opportunities to grow into that role. I think that's a really important thing. And the, mm -hmm. the next generation of leaders, because I think this is generational, the next generation of leaders coming in value different things. Like, yes, they value salary, but just as much, and sometimes even more so, they value personal development, the fact that they're getting developed, and they value freedom. And it's really hard for Gen X leaders and and boomer leaders 
to, to, to cope with because our mindset can be totally different. Yeah. That was a bit of a rabbit hole. Uh, <laughs> not really. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that, that's, that's exactly right. And I, I just literally heard uh, uh, a podcast where they were talking about that because of everything that happened with the pandemic, that people aren't, they're not getting promoted and they're not getting mentored like they were in previous generations. Yeah. And that, that, and that, that is becoming a problem. You know, when you're talking about a tech director, I mean, obviously, you know, you know, we both Duke and I've been tech directors and even, uh, I think, well, I think worship pastors have a better, I think they have a better uh, chance of becoming like the executive pastor. Or I even know we worship, I even know a whole bunch of worship pastors end up being becoming the senior pastor after many years. Yeah. Um, but when you're the tech director, I mean, basically that's, that's where you are. You're not, <laughs> you know, I've seen some tech directors become executive pastors, but you know, for the most part, you're the tech director and that's what you're going to be. Um, but you still got to be, you still got to be mentored in, in leadership. How, when you guys talk to senior pastors about that, how do you, how do you get them to understand that they're going, they've, they've spent all this money and this is one of their highest paid employees and they still are going to have to invest in them even more. Well, we all need, we, we all need to grow. And uh, it, it's, it's like why coaching has taken off so much because every great leader needs a coach. They need somebody who's pushing them to be better somebody who's equipping them to be better it's like the old saying the you know the lead pastor said to the executive pastor what if we invest in our leaders and they leave you remember it and the executive yeah. pastor said what if we don't what if we don't and they stay, stay? Yeah. yeah yeah it's it, it's it's that i mean you have you have to be growing you have to be evolving especially in in a skilled position like a tech director i mean they they need resources on how to continue to grow as people managers volunteer managers mm -hmm. but also with with i mean the, the rate that gear is changing i mean it's it's crazy but you talk about um pre-pandemic post-pandemic and you touched mm -hmm. on that a little bit there van you know i i'm a firm believer that the circumstances don't define us they reveal us and we got so revealed during the, the pandemic time and i think what got revealed on church staffs is that we were focused too much on the people that we were serving that we forgot the people that we're serving with and wow. so there was there was breakdown in staff relationships because suddenly we're no longer even in an office together and there's no relational uh, context uh, or, or or relational depth. Now we would say we would say two things in the work that we do. Usually every problem in ministry tracks back to a person. And that's <laughs> partly why we're in the people business, right? It's either helping a person break through and be better or it's help or it's going finding a, a, a new person for the team or an additional person for the team. Uh, but also it tracks back to the lack of relational equity. And so you have to have relational context with a leader so that we're at, at the 10,000 foot level. So relationship happens at 10,000 feet. Vision happens at the 30,000 foot view. Right. Ministry happens at the one foot. Now, when you have tension at the one foot level, like the mix wasn't good, production wasn't good, the lead pastor is now weighing in. And we know that's not fun when the lead pastor starts to weigh in. If, you, if there's weigh in from the lead pastor to the tech director at the one foot level, and there hasn't been enough relational investment at the 10 foot le 10,000 foot level, what happens? Yeah. Yeah. It, Break it all, yeah. Yeah. And it causes, it causes a lot of stress. Yeah, because it's like if you don't, I can handle your criticism if I know that you care about me. Yeah, if I, the, you know, you know what's going on in my life. You know that maybe the marriage isn't great right now. Maybe my kids are struggling right now. You know their names. We've done life together. You know my hopes and dreams. I can handle. I have context now for the constructive feedback that you're giving me. If right. if th that relational equity is not there, it falls apart real quick yeah 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 and i i think that you know uh one of my first tech director that i worked for at saddleback ken robertson said uh, you know a lot of pastors uh look at the tech director like the village witch doctor they know they need them but they're completely terrified of them 
So they, so they, they, they stay away from them, you know, because they, they, they don't know because tech people are way different pretty much than anybody else in the church. And a lot of pastors, I think don't know. I mean, once they get to know them, if they take that first step and get to just, just dive in and get to know them, they'll, they'll be able to have a relationship with them. But honestly, there's a lot of, of senior pastors that are actually uh, and I'm not necessarily intimidated, but they just don't get tech people, right. you know? Right. And so they don't, they don't even know how to, you know, how do I approach this person? You know, mm -hmm. you know, cause with a youth pastor, they're still a pastor and they're pastoring people and it's very similar. And a lot of senior pastors were youth pastors. And so they kind of get it, but for tech people, it's a different, you know, it's a totally different breed. And I think for it's, it's harder for a lot of senior leaders to mentor the tech directors, or at least they think it is. The flip side of that van is they have a very unique relationship with the tech director, because we know that if the tech director is not good, uh, <laughs> that's a big issue for the lead pastor. Yeah. And, and they and they connect it to them in a very tangible way every, every week that yeah. they're not so much with other people on the staff. Well, and I can even say from being on staff at two large churches that both the pastors that I worked for, the senior pastors that I worked for, they always came back and talked to me. They always right. said hello to me. They always, right. you know, they, they were very, you know, um, they, they made sure that they knew what was going on with me and they, you know, and we're talking churches that were huge and yeah. they still yeah. did that yeah. with that. So it is, it is absolutely possible. It, it, it's possible, it's, but I think I think there's some differences there, Van, because you you are an extrovert by nature. Because I, I like my experiences were very different. Um, like the first church I was on staff at, I didn't. I maybe was in five meetings with the lead pastor the first four years I was on staff. Total. Mm. I mean, it was insane. Um, and then um, about midway through my tenure run there, all of a sudden we finally started having a weekly meeting to talk about services and some of those things. But even then, that was about the only time I ever had meetings with him. And it, it was just, it was a very strange thing because, you know, there was the pastoral staff and then mm -hmm. there was everybody else. And everybody else just kind of, it's just like, well, yeah, just do your thing, you know. Um, over the years, what I've kind of come to the conclusion of is more pastors need to treat their production leaders like the pastors they should be, mm. and more pro and more production leaders need to grow and learn to become the pastors they should be. Right. Um, but they need each other to do it, and that's the thing that I often don't see that kind of makes me sad. Mm. Yeah. Well, and I think I, how how do you how do you coach pastors? to, to do that, to, you know, to mentor their technical, to, to their deal with us. Weirdos. And, yeah. I mean, we know that there's realistic expectations and unrealistic expectations based on the church size, but Van, as you said, uh, it, you've been at massive churches where that those lead pastors interacted well with you. Um, but yeah, as you said, you Van's a very likable guy and warm and an extrovert. I it's thought he was setting, an extrovert. I didn't say he was likable. It's, <laughs> it's setting. It, no comment. It's setting. I think. Hey, like hey, hey, dude, Tim, Tim likes me. So. I, I like you, Van. So it's it, one it's, person. It's setting realistic expectations. I mean, you're not going to get a lot of lead pastors that are going to take the tech director out for lunch every week or maybe every month right it could be as simple as just knowing your tech director's name and his life and his family and interacting right. with him on a sunday morning or whenever in right. in in a warm way and then coming into the debrief meeting for 10 minutes every week and actually giving some positive feedback before the negative comes and some affirmation i mean that could be the least um, at most, it could absolutely be a, a lunch, a breakfast or something every couple of weeks or, or monthly. The more you can invest in relationship at any level of the organization, the, the, the more camaraderie you're going to have and the health of the mm -hmm. ministry is going to be. Because it's all about seriously. It is the absolute gas in the tank is relational equity with your leaders. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, and I, mean, I don't. I don't think this is just a production topic. I what I see a lot, and and I guess give me your take, um, is there isn't a lot of intentional mentoring and intentional leadership development with um, 
certainly production, but I, I mean, I, I see that a lot with worship with even youth, you know, it's, it's again, a lot of times it's kind of this, um, uh, well, I hired you, so I don't know, let me know what you need. And that's kind of the amount of the development. And I think that's one of the things as, as a church, we've got to figure out how to get better at is developing oh, yeah. the leaders to lead the teams and the and other leaders. Duke, there's, a, there's an awakening happening because uh, there's such a need right now for ministry leadership in churches, ministries all over the country that people are getting offers that are more money and a sunny as it goes. And so what are you going to do to offer, to, to help your leaders realize, A, they're wanted, B, they're called, and C, they're developed? Mm -hmm. All of us need development opportunities. And so it's, it's asking, it's simple questions. It's regular, regular performance evaluation meetings that you actually let the, the, the leader run, not the supervisor. Hey, what do you want to talk about today? And then at mm -hmm. the end of it, I've got some simple questions for you. How are you doing on these staff values? What do you need from me? What do you need to thrive here? If you were to leave, why would you leave? It's asking simple questions and then addressing those concerns. That's a, that's a scariest. I think <clears throat> that is something I, I don't think I've ever been asked in a job. <laughs> if you were going to leave, why would you leave? Yeah. That is, oh. that is, usually, that, I, usually, I actually, usually it's more if, if what can we do to get you to leave? Yeah. The quality, the quality of your questions right. will determine the quality of your ministry and the quality of your ministry relationships. And so it's, yeah. if you're supervising a tech director, if you're a tech director supervising contractors or volunteer leaders, meet with them regularly and ask them powerful questions and then respond to the feedback that you get. Because even you, obviously you volunteer, vol that I found back in my, my former life as a worship pastor, when I ran trainings that what for volunteers, that was the, the quickest way to develop a sense of ownership and mm -hmm. to make a huge deposit in the, in the relationship bank. Yeah. They loved that. They absolutely loved it. You, you guys know, because you run those workshops. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we did, and that's what I did because we, you know, we would, I would bring, and, and I actually had a tech director say to me one time, well, I, I don't want to do camera workshop because that takes people away from their families and blah, blah, blah. I said, no, I said, don't do it every week, mm. but do it once a month and have, you know, people in church like food, tech people like food and they like to get trained uh, right. and they like to, you know, get swag. That's a separate, well, I, maybe that's I, just I, me, yeah. but, but I mean, you know, if you bring, I had the most success w bringing everybody in early on a Saturday morning for a couple right. hours and training right. one thing, like training all the camera people or training all the pro presenter people or tra whatever. Right. And, and, and you think it's, it's out of their, you know, that they, I've got so much to do, but most of the time, everybody would show up every time because I mean, they want to be invested it. in. Workshop and training opportunities in any area of ministry. It's like catnip to that area of ministry. I mean, people, people will eat it up because it, it gives them tools to be better at their craft. Preachers, student pastors, worship right. pastors, tech director, any area of the organization. Development right. is, is so, so important. Yeah. Well, and, and and Whatever it is, I, it's just the fact that somebody is investing in you. And I, again, I think that's yeah. what I see is, is, is there's just such a lack of investment. Um, and it's not just the church. I think that's, that's a challenge kind of in the leadership vacuum as a whole right now. But yeah. um, that investing in others has become a lost art. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I, I mean, think it's, don't, don't you feel like a little bit of that is, I mean, we can blame it on social media or technology and all the different things, but just the pace of life in general these days yeah. um yeah. a lot of people are just like well let's just get to the let's just can we just get to the end of the meeting right. we, you know and <laughs> and and i mean we do i do that all the time i was like what what are we doing here can we just can we skip to the part where you tell me what i need to do <laughs> yeah i mean it's a simple matrix if you don't grow if you don't grow you go if you don't grow yeah. you eventually go because you'll stagnate and the ministry mm. will outgrow you or you'll just need to go somewhere else right yeah. Hmm. Yeah. What, hmm. what do you, on this whole leaders developing leaders, what, like, if you had just like a couple of things to tell a pastor, uh, you know, or even a tech director, like what, what's the best way to start that all off? What's the way to, in an awkward situation where they're kind of, you know, they're both introverts 
Um, yeah. cause oddly I've known a lot of pastors who can speak from the pulpit, but they're complete introverts when you talk to them personally, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. uh, so when you've got a whole staff of introverts, how do you, <laughs> how do you get them to, you know, connect? I think again, it's, you start small and you, you start to shift the tone of the, of the interactions that you're having in day-to-day ministry. And so it's easy to ask questions. You know, I, I remember back in my ministry days when I would have interns and I would say, Hey, you need to start meeting with um, some of the volunteers in our ministry and you need to ask great questions. And well, I don't know what to ask. And so I would give them 20 questions and say, Hey, rehearse those questions and then ask them. I mean, I mean, f- simply for a lead pastor to, to get to know the tech director and how they first got called to ministry or what, what their journey mm-hmm. to, in Christ was was about. I mean, even just stopping by the office, uh, you know, do, doing a doing a flyby, and then letting that grow into a deeper relationship. Once you know more about a person, it is easier to interact with that person because you have common ground to stand on. And so, it starts small and let it grow from there. Yeah, no, that's both, great. Both directions. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think another thing too is um, a lot of, especially younger tech guys, and we're starting to see again, kind of that swing back to uh, worship and production guys being very young. Um, I think if I can give an encouragement to, and I wish I would have done this when I was young, is is ask those good questions up the food chain too. Um, but But also just really even just asking simple things like, I would like to be better at this. How do I do that? Right. Right. <laughs> you, know, you know what? You know what else, Duke? It's as a, if you're a tech director, it's asking your supervisor or your senior leader, and this is an easy leadership tip. What are the things that matter most to you? In my yeah. job and my role, what are the things that hit your radar most? That when right. you think about my role, you think, "Hey, if if Duke just takes care of this, this, and this, he's he's flying high." Yeah. Because that's a gift to you because then you take care of those things first in a given week. You got a ton right. of creative time to work on the stuff that energizes you. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and I think that's just a good life. I mean, when whenever we're kicking off a new project, that's actually one of the first questions we ask is, you know, we serve churches all over the country. What are the things that we need to pay attention for you? Right. Like, if we do these things, we're going to be cool. Yep. Um, because because that's just you know for us to and, and i think everybody's going so fast i think ben you mentioned that it's like there's just kind of this chaos out there and so you have to actually stop and ask those questions and be intentional about going man if i know these are the important things yeah i should i should probably put some focus on that mm-hmm. as should, opposed to just I, winging it yeah i should take care of those first <laughs> Yeah, right. You know, I, I remember when I used to do, I used to do volunteer team coaching where I'd go to a church and say, Hey, bring all your tech volunteers in and I'll talk to them. And the very first thing I would ask the pastor when I was meeting with him on that, I said, okay, give me the top three things that are your total pet peeves about your tech team. What are those top three things? Right. Just right off the top of your head. Just tell me, write those down. And then we talked through the whole thing. And the very first things that I would talk about in the meeting with the volunteers is those three things. And I wouldn't say they came from the pastor and I would just say, Hey, you know, these are things that always happen in the tech ministry, blah, blah, blah. And what would be funny is the pastor be sitting in the back. They'd be in the front and they'd be like, wow, that's amazing. That's such a, that's so smart, blah, blah, blah. And he'd be in the back going, what? (laughs) I've been trying to tell them that for five years, you know? And, and so, but they had to want to see it in a different light. And absolutely. I think it's really smart. You know, when I was a tech director, I just, I tried to figure out, okay, what are the things that the pastor loves and does not love about the service? Mm -hmm. And let's make sure we hit those things in the service and then everything else is, you know, what, you know, we can do. And I, the the last couple of churches I was at, that's what the worship pastors and I talked about is okay. But what does pastor want in the service? Like what's going to make it so he's relaxed. So he doesn't have distractions right before he walks up. Absolutely. You know, um, and I think that's one of the great things about having a, you know, going back to the staffing part of this is one of the three things that we encourage churches is if you don't have a good worship pastor, if you don't have a good partner as the senior leader, um, you're walking up on stage trying to wrangle the audience back to where they need to be so that you can preach the word of God. Right. If you've got a great worship pastor that you that that has been handpicked by 
you know, like, like my slingshot to really be in that ministry, same way with the technical director. When you walk up on that stage as a senior pastor, it's the right, it's all, it's all, it's already there. You're just going to mm-hmm. walk, you're going to walk in, they're going to be receptive. They're going to be ready to go. And it just, it's, it's transformative. And we've seen churches where you guys have bought, you know, like I talked about that last church where you guys got both the worship pastor and the technical director at the same time. Right. I went back that Christmas and the executive pastor said, I just want to tell you what, Van, this is a different church six months later. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's what we love to hear. Yeah. And he was just, he was like, it was transformative and the, the senior pastor, and I was there for the whole service. And I was like, I told him, I said, this, is, this I, I don't even recognize this church. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. You know? And they had struggled for many years, but it all kind of aligned because they got, they reached out and got the correct help and yeah. listened and listened to the help. Oh, well, yeah. and they've, de- and they've developed it. I mean, they've, they've been meeting together. They're talking about what's important together. They're talking about what's not important together. And I think that's, um, that's a shift I hope to see. I've, I mean, you, the churches you see where, um, the worship, the production, the lead pastor, like they're, they're all actually talking to each other about what's important in a weekend experience. And, and they're all part of the conversation, rather just a couple of them. And then one guy has to tell everybody else, like mm-hmm. you get into that game of telephone and it's like, you know, that guy told you, well, this is what's important to me. Right. And it's oh, like, you know well, yeah, what you, you end up, you forgot the other things. <laughs> yeah. You end up with the why. you don't get the why. And right. the why is is the fuel that that powers the what. You know, great leaders lead in both directions as well. It's asking great questions of your supervisor or your lead pastor about what's important. It's about leading and pastoring the people that your volunteers or any staff you right. may have in a way that's getting feedback from them so they feel heard and you can lead them individually and in how they need to be led. Yeah. And it's asking them great questions about what do you love about serving in this ministry or on this staff? How, how can I help you thrive in your role? I mean, those questions will unlock the information you need to be a great leader. Yeah. Well, I think too that, you know, I think you, I mean, you can say that, I don't, I don't know if you guys encountered this. I would think that you would. A lot of times, one of the reasons that tech people leave is because they do, they have an unhealthy relationship with senior leadership. Hmm. Um, and so there's a certain point, especially if they're extroverts, there's a certain point where they're going to stop trying. They're just going to be like, all right, you clearly don't want to help me. I'm siloed. I'm out here on my own. So I'm just going to do what I want. I'm just going to do this and I'm going to be over here. And then the senior leadership is like, what's going on with my production manager? You know, right. but really it was a senior leadership problem, not the tech director or the production manager per se, their, their problem, you know? So I don't know if you see that in churches when you're coming in and, and, and trying to push, put people in positions and stuff like that. Do you see that? Well, obviously the last guy left because there was a breakdown in this. And if you do see that, what do you tell those senior leadership? That's when we'll say, hey, what do you want to reimagine or reinvent in this new hire, in this next season? What do you want to be different? Again, it's all about the questions. And when you ask them what they want to be different, it tells you usually all that you need to know about how you press in and say, well, if you want that, this is how you're probably going to need to lead a little differently. And if yeah. you're ready for that, then, then we're ready to go find your person. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's cool. uh, and I think that's probably hard for some, some leadership to do, but if they will, I think it's listen, hard for everybody. Yeah. You don't want to, it's hard to admit you're wrong. So yeah. but see leadership, yeah. I think the number one thing for me when I was a tech director in a pastor was to see humility, mm. like teachability. Yeah. That, Which that, is yeah, that they were yeah. like, Hey, I was, you know, this is my, one of the, one of the, one pastor that I worked for, something happened in the church and he completely owned it in front of the whole staff. He said, this is mm. my, this was my fault. I did. I allowed this to happen. I allowed it to happen and no one's going to take responsibility for it, but me. And this is how we're going to change it. Mm. And I totally yeah. respected him for that. I was like, wow, oh, wow. I don't think I've ever <laughs> I don't think I'd ever heard a senior leader say that, wow. you know, and I, yeah. and I think you get way more mileage from your people. Uh, Cause you know, like we always say uh, tech people have a, have a pretty sensitive BS meter. And uh, so um, 
uh, you know, if it's, if it's not genuine and it's not really try trying to, to love right. and care for those people, most production people, you know, they're going <laughs> to, well, gonna sniff and, it out pretty quick. And volunteers are the same way. So if you're leading volunteers, um, if you're not authentically investing in them, they, yeah. they know. And yeah. yeah. So, well, very cool. I, that's, uh, that's probably as good a place to stop as any. So Tim, thanks for, thanks for being with us the last couple of podcasts. It's, uh, it's been awesome to have you. We'll, we'll definitely have to have you back. Oh, well, it's been great to be with you guys. It's been an energizing conversation. Yeah. If people Good. want to get a hold of you, what uh, we'll, we'll put it in the show notes, but where can, where can they, where can they go to, to find out more about slingshot straight to our website, which is slingshotgroup.org. They'll find it all there. We'd love to, we'd love to come alongside you. Yeah. And, yeah. and we can, we, we will do both Duke and I will, uh, attest to the fact that they are great <laughs> at, uh, oh my gosh, you can believe that. You've been waiting. You've been waiting all day for that, haven't you? No, you I actually it. forgot. I forgot it would do that. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. reminds me of my days in the news, boys. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> you yeah, like how I put that background? The pyro at the end of the show. But <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I mean, slingshot. Uh, from our point of view, as an integrator, we we really yeah. feel like you know, like like I said earlier, we can't fix the people problems. We can mm -hmm. fix the tech problems. All we can do is say. Hey, you have yeah. people problems, um, and here's how to you know here's how to fix that. And uh, the churches yeah. we worked with where they've done that have been, I mean, they're yeah, yeah. Thanks, there's man. such a health that happens. So, so thanks, Tim, and, and thank uh, you for really, the great work you guys do. Well, and right I back at you, and we really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, so, thanks so much. Yep. So like right. and subscribe uh, if you like these podcasts. Please uh, send them to people. Um, know that you can listen to just the audio only on the YouTube music app. So you don't have there to, you go. if you don't want to see our beautiful faces, you can, but why wouldn't you? And it, well, yeah, why wouldn't you? But if you, but if you can't, you can do You'd that. miss yeah. Duke's special effects. <laughs> That's right. Right. right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You'd have missed the fireworks. So yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll, uh, we'll be back, uh, soon.